Welcome to Harvest Word Assembly, where the word comes like fresh bread from the ovens of heaven. And as you listen to God's servant, Pastor Gwenga Shafe, keep these words as they purify you in this journey of destiny. I have found mercy and I have been revived. Hallelujah. And your fire is not going out again. Hallelujah. I say your fire is not going out again. Now that amen is for me. I say your fire is not going out again. There are fires and there are fires. There is a fire that comes by reason of the gathering of sticks. But when Moses saw the fire of God, he said that we turn aside. There is a kind of fire that compels attention. Moses said that we turn aside. And when he turned aside, he came out a prophet. Hallelujah. The voice of the Lord is in your house. And the voice of the Lord is upon your mouth. I said the encounter of these 21 days, you will come out with clear words and there won't be words that will tarry for long. They will be fulfilled by the mercies of God. No more delayed prophecies. There are certain things I've shared with us in the last one month. And I, I really don't know if I preached at all, but um, I think we need to take some time to address some of these things. But I want you to have a victory mindset. A lot of Christians have warfare mindset, but they don't have victory mindset. That means they will continue to go for deliverance and deliverance, but they will never be free. Come on, say I'm victorious. Come on, say I have a victorious mindset. <sighs> Do you think that the day Anna came before the Lord, can you hear me please? God, I don't even know where I am right now. Can you hear me please? Huh? Do you think that the day that Anna prayed, that prayer that God heard, Huh? Do you think that was the first time she prayed? Hallelujah. And I hope the children too, because some of them don't know these things concern them. Hmm. My first experience with spiritual warfare was around age five and six, when I had to go through surgery. Huh? Please, are you with me now? I had to go through surgery. And I was operated on several times. First of all, I swallowed money, which was due to nobody's fault but mine. Then I had been given a particular injection. It's a kind of vaccination. If you are in the north, you get it. As a young child, uh, I don't know. If maybe it's men. Is it men? What's that popular? Is it meningitis or something? Huh? Not polio. There's meningitis, and it reacted, and I started having a growth somewhere on my voice box. Fast forward to about three years ago or so, or four years. I'm the last uh, son and last child of my parents. We had occasion to take my son, my last son, to the hospital. And the doctor said they must operate. Come on, say patterns. Huh? I'm the last child. He's the last child. About the, around the same age range. The doctor is saying they must what? They must operate. I said no. And the doctor, the same way they told my parents that it was a 50-50, the doctors told us that even this surgery, there was no guarantee that it could, it could work, it may not work. Was my son there many years ago? Patterns have no respect for your grammar. There are genetic markers, spiritual markers in your bloodline. If you don't remove them and you are speaking French, 
Huh? You are speaking Queen's English. Or you go to a church where they don't believe in addressing these things. Even if you're a pastor, you can, you can, be, you can, be, you can be backward. I'm not saying this affects everybody. I'm just trying to explain certain things. Some of you are looking at the wrong places. You are looking for the markers in the wrong places. Your father beat his mother. Now you are also testing your mic and your punches on your wife. You are, you, are banging, you are hitting the door out of anger. Very soon you will transfer the punch to the rightful owner. <laughs> Be careful. Come on, say be spiritual. You have to be spiritual to see some things. And this is the best time for you to take two months, three months, address it. But you must have a victory mindset. Don't have a mindset that this is what you'll be doing for the rest of your life. There's no time. There's money to be made. There's money to be made. The age gap between myself and my son. What's the age gap? Uh, 35. Or thereabout. So, you can imagine something that happened to me at a particular time. That five years later, and somebody is telling me rubbish that there's nothing like pattern. Please, are you with me? Yes, you must have a victory mindset. I'm not asking you to be afraid of the problem. I'm saying have a victory mindset that between me and this problem, somebody will come out of the ring, and and I'm the one. This is not the time. I, I, I mentioned the story of Anna because I want to bring out a principle there. And if I forget, remind me. Because I will tell you that the reason why many of us are not delivered is because of very little things. My so- when Anna came year after year, came year after year, came year after year, there was no solution. This time when she came to the altar, she came weeping. She did, there was nothing to pray about again. Are you with me? There was nothing like, she just stood before the Lord and started weeping. There is something that is called the covenant of your tears. When you stand before the Lord and you really don't have words that describe how you feel. And you just stand there and you weep before him. And then the Lord sent the prophet to her and said, that affliction is now gone. Has the prophet been there all these years? He has been the priest, I mean Eli. He has been the priest for years. Has seen the woman come year after year. Saw her coming with her sacrifice. But that day, there was something about that prayer that day. She didn't hold back. She didn't say, oh God, I've sowed a seed last year. I did this idea. She just came tired. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, Pastor David, please give me that scripture, that the Lord stores our tears in his bottle. The Lord has a bottle where he stores tears. Some of you are not aware that God keeps, he keep, it's like an old man, an old grandmother that keeps old old things in the house, bottles, sticks, God is a very old person. He's not a, he doesn't have an iPhone. He doesn't use all those things. But bottles, he likes bottles. Huh? Psalm 56 and verse 8. Let's read that one very quickly. Psalm 56. God is a very old person. He likes gathering things that people are not interested in, like bottles. Do you have it? Look at this. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears where? In your bottle. Are they not in your book? Give me another version. Because some people think it's King James. Look at that word wandering. You know what it means for somebody to wonder? That's significant, but that's not our message for today. You have taken account of my wanderings in Amplified. Put my tears... You see, when a man, be- a man begins to wander up and down and his destiny is not beginning to add up, you get to a point in your life, nothing describes your frustration. You can't even tell people because they will just tell you it is well. They will tell you it is well so I can carry your problem and move to the next street. 
because they don't they are also dealing with their own demons they don't have time for say it is worse let's be that prayerful let's be, they are just trying to micromanage you they don't know anything about what you are talking about and they don't want to feel depressed because of your problem so they will tell you it is well this guy said give me that scripture he said thou you have taken account of my wanderings. Hey, is it UI UX today? Hey, is it is it web design tomorrow? Should I go to school? Uh, open university. Hey, I'll finish now. No job. Ah, no husband. Hey, they say it's uh, one online prayer meeting in the morning. They say it's one they are doing at 6 p.m. You have attended everything. He said, God has taken account. Come on, say account. Say, where did she go yesterday? Say. Uh, revival. So, how many days? Say 21. So, uh, what of that? Uh, she was there. God was taking account. God has taken note. All your genuine efforts eh, that you think nobody saw. The Bible says God takes account. Because the day God decides to answer you, he will not talk to anybody about it. It will just happen. When they now ask you, how come you have this testimony? You say it's God. I don't know. How many of you have been there? Just realize that by the time it happened, you could not say this was what you did. It was just God in his mercy saying, today is the day. Come on, I'm prophesying to somebody. I say, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. You, you won't, oh, okay, yeah, you prayed, you prayed, but it's, you can't really say the prayer, you can't really say the fasting, you can't really say the VG. You just know that on this day, 23rd of July, you got home, the sickness was gone, the pain was gone, you could now sleep well, you could, they couldn't find the lump again, the growth was gone, the ulcer was gone, the asthma was gone. You just find that, ah, ah, ah. Say, thou was taken into account my what? My wanderings. All your effort, all your pain, all your wahala, all your, let's come to this place, mama, it is 100,000, you pay. You rush to this other place, say it's on 5,000. You are just donating and donating money you could have used for yourself. And the Bible says, God started taking account. When Jesus came, he told us he was a teacher. But now we can see that God is also an accountant. He says, put my tears in what? Are they not recorded? What are these things that are recorded? My tears. God has a book. Every time you are cheated, every time you something happened, and God said, don't talk. Keep quiet. And it seemed as if you suffered for nothing. God recorded it. This is where the book of remembrance comes out from. Come on, are you with me now? I said, this is where the book of remembrance comes out from. If there's nothing recorded, there's nothing to remember. That's why I, I, I really don't understand when you have a problem, you tell everybody except Jesus. The man who takes the record, who goes into the, he records everything you are going through, is God himself. He said these tears are recorded in your book. God has a Welcome to Harvest World Assembly where the word comes like fresh bread from the ovens of heaven. And as you listen to God's servant, Pastor Gwenga Shafe, keep these words as they purify you in this journey of destiny. Message the ancient gods of the Bible. Ancient. Give me first, first Samuel. Some of you have not read the book of Samuel. Some of you, your name is Samuel, and you still have not read the book of Samuel. Eh? Even some Davis have not read Sam. <laughs> All right. First Samuel. Hmm. See, let me tell you, when we share the grace, it's not a time for you to be making noise and jumping up and down and connecting with your friends. Sometimes you need to stay away from people, come to the altar and shed your tears. Is somebody listening to me? Is who? Oh, is, Please, is somebody listening to me? It's your, it's your moment. There are some things you really cannot explain to people. It's a bit complicated. Just bring it to Jesus. First Samuel 7. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now. I live. 
is recorded in this world. Hallelujah. It is only that you look at me. I've got a message from the Lord. Brother, come and see. My brother, Look to Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus Just now and me. It is recorded. us the grace to always put our eyes upon Jesus. May the Lord give us that grace. I say may the Lord give us that grace. First Samuel chapter 7 and the men of Kerah Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord. If you want to get the full uh, benefit of this story you need to go into uh, start from maybe chapter 5 or so. Uh So maybe I will run through this very soon, all right? If I get some good ratings, if I don't get it, I will, I will just be f- flying that revelation by myself, you know. Give me that scripture. And the men of Kirajerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the eel and sanctified Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kiriajeri, that the time was long, for it was what? 20 years. How many years was it that the ark had been gone? 20 years. 20 long years. People were going to church. They were going for prayer meeting in Israel. There was a, there was, the priest would come and say, the Lord bless you. The Lord caused light to say, but God was not there. You know, we can do church without God. Sometimes we have our program, opening prayer, uh, uh, worships on the school, uh, Monday school, uh, uh, prayer meeting. And, uh, we just do it. We have the prayer points already listed. There is no spontaneity. There is no move of the spirit. And it's all in Jesus' name. But the ark had been gone for over 20 years, which means a child that gave birth to 20 years ago didn't know what it meant to be in church. And experience God. He didn't know. So when our old churches started losing their sons to some of the newer churches, this was part of the problem. But nobody agreed. We only uh, say, uh, say the, that service is too long. Somebody was in this church some time ago, and uh, my wife was asking, "So, are you blessed?" Say, I, say, I was blessed. Say, but size was a bit long. I just smiled. I said, "They have not opened your fire." When they open your fire, they serve, you cannot be looking at the time. Because I only have one question for you. Let's define long. It's relative according to physics. Huh? Long is what? It's relative according to... That means what is long for me may not be long for you. Do you watch Netflix? Do you have a Netflix account? Share. Do you like the shows, TV shows, the series and seasons? Say yeah. Do you have anyone you are watching? I say yeah. How many seasons? I say, oh, those one that's like season nine. What's the title? You say dynasty. I know the way they act those movies. The final two minutes of that episode, something will happen. So even if you don't want to watch, you'll be looking for data. You'll be hungry, but you must buy data. Say data is life. Huh? 
So I, I took it as a positive or a, a feedback with mixed feelings. Because I just looked at her like, okay, she doesn't really have much problems. So, so, so. Have, you ever, have you ever been to the hospital and you had to wait for the doctor? And it seemed like everybody who went in was taking so much time. Huh? So much time at the hospital. Come out now. Everybody has an emergency. Say, madam, say, I'm coming. Just give me five minutes. You see, five minutes. I went to see a doctor. I went with my daughter. The doctor just looked at the result. He said, oh, it's nothing much, nothing much. Just give. I said, hey, wait. Talk to me, I'm a father. Don't play that card with me. Nothing much, nothing much. On top of my HMO, on top of my money, on top of it. What is in this result? I can Google it, but you are here, so talk. When he saw my eyes, he started explaining, okay, this one is low, this one is a bit high. I said, okay, so this one, what's this one? I said, this drug doesn't work. We've tried it before. We started talking. Because <laughs> I knew how long I waited to come inside. You just used your hand. Because, and he was even eating corn. <laughs> Early in the morning, eating corn. Uh, roasted corn. Wow. So be careful. Who, who is attending to your child? All these corn-eating doctors, they may not help you. 20 years. A child of 20 years today would have finished university. If he went to a private school, would have graduated. 20 years is a lot of time to be without God. When many of us and when we look at some people who have pursued God and they found him, we, you, you don't know why they are very they are very energetic about it. It's because of what they found. In the pursuit of God, what they found, what they found, the day God told them, don't go out, and they didn't go out, and God preserved their life. And the day God told them, this morning, 5 a.m., go out, and they met with in, incredible profit. You now tell them that uh, people are doing something, I should, I, I, no, 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 no. Every major bus stop of my life, you, you just look back. You just realize that every major boss of your life, where something major happened for it all, because you are following God's directions. Not trend. God doesn't do trend. God doesn't do something because it's popular. It's popular for you. His own civilization is way ahead. 20 years a nation without God. Give me the next verse. He said, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord, wailed, prayed, cried. Give me the next verse. And Samuel spoke unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord, with what? Did God make room for partial repentance? He said, if you return with what? What the word all means is that there is no segment of your life you will hide. Where have you been in the last 20 years? Oh, you married. Oh, you are married now. Oh, okay. Who did you marry? Jezebel. Ah. You will bring. <laughs> mm. You must return with, with all your heart. You see, your heart is like a bank. It has a signature card for every major thing that has happened in your life. You cannot bring a part and say, take my... No, 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 I need your soul too. I need your body. Not just your spirit. Not just for you to be speaking in tongues. That's, that's cheap because that's a gift of the spirit. I give you. But I need your soul. But most of us, we contend with that one because giving your soul to God comes with a price. Because it means that you will not take a will, your decision until the Lord has sanctified that will. It says, he that walketh in us both to, to do, will and to do of his good pleasure. That means God is working with you to choose the things you are choosing. That's what it means to be a Christian. Not to say you are baptized at Jerusalem. Sorry, what was that? Bab? River, River Jordan. The people doing the baptism at Jordan, many of them are not even born again. They are just doing it to make money. Now. And they will even give you a certificate. $30. I'm not joking. If you like, go and, you that God has been working with, go and put your head under one guy that is smoking banner to, because you are in Israel, you want to no, I'm not joking, no. 
I'm not joking. There are many of the tall guys there, they are, they are heavy drinkers and heavy smokers. That you are in Israel doesn't mean you are close to God. <laughs> Next verse. Put away all the strange gods. Ne verse 3. Put away all the strange gods. Give me verse 3, verse 3, verse 3. Put away all the strange gods and Ashtaroth. You see this Ashtaroth? I have a genuine hatred. Ashtaroth is the sex god. Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth in ancient text. Ancient text. Eh? Is the when you read some of the writings of Ashtaroth, she's the one who says, I am a man, I am also a woman. That's Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is the one who demands worship from people a man. But you say before you worship, you must dress like a like a woman. He likes it. Oh, sorry, she likes it. She's also the god of sex change. She's also the goddess of LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, E, I, G. Ashtaroth is the god that America worships. Even in Israel now, you are not permitted to speak against anybody who is homosexual in Israel. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. The man of God told them that they must repent and put away the strange gods and he specified Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is a sex god. Most of us are slaves to this God today. Ashtaroth will prevent genuine Christians from marrying. It will make quality men unavailable, quality women unavailable. So you have a lot of Christians who are hitting close to 40. They can't do anything about it because they are Christians. But Satan's strategy is that if he puts you in that gap for too long, you will compromise. And that's all he's looking for. Say he doesn't mind the time. He can keep you there for 10 years. So if you are not spiritually on your feet, if you are sleeping, if you are a sleeper, you remember that message I preached, awake, oh sleeper. If you, do, if you are always sleeping and saying, it, everything is alright, God will do it. You will now realize that there are many spirits that are involved in your matter, including Ashtaroth. The gods. Why am I emphasizing the show of the gods that now that the fasting is over, don't bring the gods back. Come on now. Don't bring those gods back. Please, are you with me now? Don't bring the gods back. Don't, and how many Christians do it successfully is that they become careless and they explain away their recklessness. Things like God will understand or God understands or nobody is perfect. Are those statements true? Yes. But there are loopholes that Satan can catch on, catch in on. Look at what he said. He said, take away Ashtaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord. The word prepare is very significant. Unfortunately, this today is not for Bible study. I would have taken all those words. Prepare your heart the way you prepare your food. If you are to prepare something that the president will come and eat, the, the extent of care, patience that goes into it, Samuel says, prepare your heart like that. And serve him only. Can you see the word service? Can you see the word service? This is for those who think they can relate with God the way they like. God says, it's not only for you to worship me, you must serve me. We are in a day now. People serve with their lips. God says you will serve me. You cannot serve God without a cost on you. Your money, your time, your effort must go into it. If not, it's not service, it's pleasure. Please, are you with me? Aha. Next verse. No time. I will, see, I promised Pastor David today. Then the children of Israel did put away Balim and what? And serve the Lord. Now, let me quickly say something. When I come back to talk about the ancient gods of the Bible, I will still talk about it. You see, Balim is, as a, is a male god. God. Small g. The female counterpart of Balim is Ashtaroth. So, most of the demon spirits that we know, huh? including, what's that one at Oshun State? Yeyoshun. 
Eh? All those ones that wear white and say they are very holy. Eh? All those female deity, like the one that I prayed for in the East, where they, she is, their family produces the, the, the lineage, the priesthood, and they must be women. All of them fall under Ashtaroth. Ogun, Amadioa, what's the one in your village? Ogugu. They're all under. <laughs> so, Baal is like a general word for gods that have capacity for seduction. Are you with me now? Their major strength is what? Seduction. They will not tell you don't serve God. They will say combine. Baal will never tell you don't serve God. He will say combine. When Christianity came to Nigeria, they, they landed at Ogun State. Ogun State people rejected Christianity. Then they decided to what? To collaborate. To what? There was, there was a song we used to sing. If you don't know that song, it's in tongues. The song means in Yoruba language that embracing Christianity does not mean you should not serve your father's idols. So when Christianity was struggling, when you go to history, they'll say Christianity first came, CMS, you, you read all those stories. They didn't tell you this one, that they met with resistance. So in order to make it compatible, they now adjusted the, so a code, a line in that code to make it compatible not only with iOS, but with Linux and Android. The original software is what? It's iOS. But we need more customers. So they now adjusted something so that it can also be compatible. And that's, what, that's why today, Ogun State still has that problem. Ogun State is not even as developed as Ondo State. It's the gods of that land that is worrying them. <laughs> 